Shalom, I'm giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh Dash, saying double honors to our apostles and elders, Her great millstone, peace and blessings to the Lord's hopefully elect. So I also watched the brothers out GMS Cleveland out there that had their camp session this past Saturday, and Vocab Malone, and as well as his um, followers, decided to show up. And, you know, just like normal, any, any other day, the brothers just defended the gospel. They defended the gospel very well. They handled that very well. They went over a number of topics, which I um, kind of want to cover. I kind of kind of got a list of certain things I want to cover, and I'll just cover them uh, briefly. And, you know, the point is that uh, no matter how many times this guy tries to come up, he's not going to change our doctrine. He's not going to convince us that we're wrong. So really, he's just wasting his time, and we just keep defending the gospel. And this is why. And and it's funny. They they actually he he laughed at the, the the fact that the brother said like, yeah, you're just helping us teach the word. You're helping us spread the word. And, and he keeps laughing at that. And he was like, yeah, I keep hearing that a lot, but they're just lies. Like, no, it's really the truth because all you done was spark fire for the brothers to do certain topics, go over certain uh, 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 lessons and stuff again, because the stuff they was covering, the stuff the brothers was covering, they was bringing out a bunch of precepts, you know, sharpening the sword, you know, it's like, oh man, I ain't heard that precept in a minute, going over certain topics, and I'm like, this is good, this is good, so a good opportunity to, to go over those certain topics again, man, bring out, you know, the old scriptures again, man, get these breakdowns going, so thank you, you're just helping us. Right? That's why the scripture said you could do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So he had his men. Uh, eventually, he stepped to the side and he let his uh, J whoever Jake that followed him try to step in. And they tried to talk about Romans 11, you know, because they're trying to squeeze the Gentiles into salvation. And they're trying to use the breakdown of Romans 11 to say that the Gentiles can be uh, grafted in or brought in to the fold. Now, the book of uh, Revelation, I'm sorry, the book of Romans, chapter 11, the grafting is all referring to the nation of Israel. And you, if you do a little research about grafting, you would know, as we're going to do, talk about grafting. Um, when you want to graft, it's primarily done with two fruit trees or fruit trees, you can say. Grafting has to, you have to be specific as far as the type of plant or genus, as they would say, or gene, as you would say. Uh, grafting can be done only when there's uh, the, the 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 tree and the families are similar. They have to be of the same, you could say, family. Otherwise, it won't work. So, you know, I just did a little research on it. Like I said, just going to try to be brief. So it says here, you know, what is grafting? Uh, grafting is a technique that joins two plants into one, combining characteristics of both plants. And as you can see, they show how... What you do is you take the root from one plant and then you take the skion or like the you could say the body part of another of another one of the same family. That's what you're going to get. You join them together and then you tap wrap them and keep them wrapped and then they become um, one. However. So just. Um, going down here, it says. Maybe I'll pass it, but I believe he says in this article here, uh, what plants can be grafted? It says many types of plants and trees can be grafted, including fruit trees, such as apple, cherry, and citrus, and other trees like birch, beech, ash, spruce, and cedar varieties. I'm going to jump down. Not all plants can be grafted, though. They have to be compatible in both rootstock and skion for it to work properly. The same plant species and genus are more successful than plants from a different genus. So that's just that's that, right? So if we go to another one, I have it here. I just typed in in Google. This was the AI response. Can I pick any two trees and graft? And what they say is no. This is just the AI response. Not any two trees can be grafted together. Okay, there has to be compatibility with the rootstock and the skion, right? So, you know, the answer is no, right? As it says here, um, rootstocks and skions that belong to the same botanical species are always compatible. So anything that is an apple can be grafted to another apple. Rootstocks and skions from different species in the same genus are usually compatible. So there are rules to... Grafting. So if we go to Revel uh, Romans 11, verse 16, it 
He says, for, now this is Paul speaking here. Now, Paul said he is an apostle of the Gentiles. Why does he say that? Because he himself, he categorizes himself as one. Um, though he was an Israelite grown in, grown in, up in the knowing the ways of Israel as a uh, Pharisee, you can say he persecuted the church. And Yahweh Shah set him up to what magnify his office as a Gentile. Right? So he said, magnify, so like magnify his office of the Gentiles. I'm going to put it that way. It says, for if the first fruit be holy, right, the lump is also holy, right? So, right, the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. So, it says, and if the roots be holy, so are the branches. Exactly. Now we're talking about the Israelites, right? It says, and if some of the branches be broken off, and this is talking about those uh, Jews, right, who knew that they were Jews, but they lacked understanding of faith. They sought justification by the law, but they grew up. They knew they were Jews. They knew they were Israelites. They knew to Abraham, Isaac. They kept the law, you could say, from birth. But a lot of them were hypocrites, right? But they would be categorized as Pharisees, as Sadducees, as the Jews, right? But it said they were broken off. It says, and thou, being a wild olive tree, right? Because the scriptures, let's stop there and show you that the scriptures refer to the Israelites as the wild olive tree. Revelation 11, verse 3. Um, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angels stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Yahweh and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave, it's like, yeah, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Right. So it's even telling you you're going to measure within the temple. And that's really and, and those without the temple measure not for they are given to the Gentiles. And the word heathen means outside the temple. That's what the word means. It says, and I will give power to my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Those two witnesses is talking about the north, uh, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. The the men that walked that made it in the wilderness, you know, because we sent sent twelve spies, twelve spies forth, right? Only two of them came back and had faith and said that we can take it. That was Caleb, who was a Judite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, who was a Ephraimite. That was symbolic of the two tribes, right? The two leaders of the two, the, what will later have become the two kingdoms. Those are the two witnesses. It says, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the power of the earth. And this is also spoken about in Zechariah, the fourth chapter. These are the two olive trees standing as witness uh, against, as a witness against the, the earth. Right. It's talking about the southern and the northern kingdom. That's what it's talking about. So if we go back. So the olive tree, but he said a wild olive tree, right? Now that word wild, no, let me read it again. Romans 11, 17. And if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Okay, so he's saying that this wild olive tree was grafted into the holy tree, the holy root and partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, meaning they're what? Keeping the commandments now. They have faith. They understand that they're Israelites. They're doing the best of their ability to do that, which is right. Because at first they were cast off, meaning they were born thinking they were Greeks. They were keeping the Greek customs, just like we all were. We all were Gentiles at one point. We were all lost. We were all led astray. And then we woke up to the fact that we're Israelites. And then we came back into the truth. So it said a wild olive tree. Now, when it says a wild is referring to the nature of our people. Just like uh, Isaiah chapter 5 says, verse 3. Uh, is that it? Is that chapter 5? Yes. Verse 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, be, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look that it should bring forth the grapes... Right, because that's what he planted. Brought it forth wild grapes. Right. 
So he's saying, how is it that I planted this holy seed, but what was brought forth was strange? And that's that's what he's referring to. Many times the Heavenly Father have called his people strangers. And you could say Gentiles. Because he's saying, I, I planted a holy right seed. How is it that you have become a degenerate unto me? That's Jeremiah chapter 2. A degenerate means a stranger or like an alien, as the scriptures refer to us as. That word, wild grapes, by our shayam, stinking or worthless things, right? Wild grapes. Because he's saying, I planted a holy seed. I was supposed to bring back grapes. How is it that these strange, these strange things came forth? It's talking about our nature, the mentality of our people. They led, they they were they were drawn away from the Lord to follow the the heathen the uh, the gods of the other heathen and adopted their practices and made it their own, and said like yeah now we are Greeks now we are Syrians now we're Babylonians and the Lord said I didn't set this up what the hell is this what is these altars why are you sacrificing your children in the valley of Tophet to Molech I never set that up. Then you go down. Verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment. See he's breaking it down. And the men of Judah his pleasant plant. Meaning that's the grapes he planted. And he looked for judgment. Meaning he was looking for righteousness. He was looking for our people to actually follow the law that the Lord established us with. Right. But behold, oppression for righteousness. But behold, a cry. So. He's looking, you know, like he's looking at us with a side eye. He like, I did not establish you to do these things. I told you that which was right. But behold, why am I witnessing oppression and crying out? So to him, we were like strange. Right. So that's what that means when it says a wild. And there's many other scriptures that you can go into it. Like I said, I'm just being brief. So verse 17, and if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. So what you have to understand is this wild olive tree is not talking about a completely different tree. It's still talking about Israelites, but they were considered wild because they were grown up in the other customs. Just like Timothy, his father was a Greek, right? But his mother kept it, kept the she, my mother was a, his mother was a Jew, but you would look at that and say, "Oh, that must mean Timothy was a so-called white man." No, it just means his father didn't believe, but his mother did. That's all it means. And Timothy was uh, circumcised and he was baptized, showing you that he could be saved. And he says, "Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee." So, if you were brought into this. And you might even have the appearance of the other nations, right? You brought into this and you see, oh, yeah, how about Shem is dealing with me? He gave me the Holy Spirit. I'm out here teaching. Whereas the Jews, because you got Israelites who are Negro only doctrines, etc., like that. Or back in the day, like I said, you had Jews, right, who was moved with envy and jealousy. As the scripture says, they were mad that they were coming to the temple and praying and being filled with the Holy Spirit and performing miracles. They were mad about that because they said, we supposed to be the gatekeepers. We supposed to dictate what's going on around here. Who are these people? They didn't even they don't even know that they was Israelites. They eat they was eating unclean foods. I ain't never ate an unclean food. I hell I strain my water with a net to make sure I don't accidentally engulf uh anything that's unclean. And the Lord and they get the Holy Spirit, this ain't right. And the Lord did that to hope to to humble most of them. That's how he said he was gonna do it. But he's saying that you 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 um you could say the uncircumcised according to the people. The fact that you were brought in because you believe by faith, don't boast against them. Because the same, because you can be cast right back out, as he says. Uh, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Exactly. Thou will say then, the branches were broke off, broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Again, those Jews, they didn't believe in faith. They believe in justification by law. They even persecuted Yahweh Shai. So it says, because of unbelief, they were broken off. But thou standest by faith. And that's exactly why you were grafted in. Because you understand that you're justified by faith. It says, be not high-minded, but fear. For if Yahweh spirit not the natural branches, 
Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Yahweh on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou shalt also be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for Yahweh is able to graft them in again. So if those natural branches, the Jews, the circumcised, repented and accepted Yahweh Shem Yahushai and believed in faith, they're back in as well. Okay? It says, for if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, meaning the natural branches, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree, meaning the Lord could bring them back as well. Because if you read up, as he says, verse uh, 13, it says, For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Who is he talking about? Talking about the Jews. Emulation means uh, jealousy. Provoked them to jealousy to see that the Holy Spirit has reached who they call or look down upon uncircumcised or unclean. To cause them to uh, repent. So the, the Romans 11 is still talking about Israelites. It's just talking about the Israelites who knew that they were circumcised, who had a problem with Yahweh Shai. And then you had the Israelites who were uncircumcised, you could say by heart or even by the flesh, who, when they heard, they grew up under Greek customs and believe in all this other madness. But when they heard the Lord, the word of the Lord, when they repented, when they heard the resurrection, they believed. And thus, they were, if they were filled with the Holy Spirit, salvation was brought to them. And that they are being brought back into the fold. That's what Yahweh Shah came to do. All right, bring them back into the fold. As he said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's all about Israel. Okay? And if you, you look up the nature of grafting, they have to be of the same family. Because we're still talking about Israelites. That's why we're still talking about what olive trees. Okay? So that's your law.